Take a trip back to 1976 and discover a unique piece of TV history, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour. This show took the well-known Brady family from their regular sitcom setting to a musical stage, creating a one-of-a-kind experience for viewers. But what makes this series stand out over time? As we explore the Brady Bunch's musical adventures, get ready for a mix of emotions. There are plenty of funny, surprising, and even sad facts waiting to be uncovered, so stay tuned for the details. Have you ever wondered about the behind-the-scenes stories that might not be well-known? Are there any lesser-known facts or interesting anecdotes about this TV series that pique your interest? Get ready to satisfy your curiosity as we reveal the stories that happened off-camera. Now it's your turn. What's your favorite memory or personal experience related to this TV series? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share the laughter, the surprises, and everything in between. So, get ready for more insights into the Brady Bunch Variety Hour. There's a wealth of stories waiting for you, and we're just getting started. What's your Brady Bunch story? The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a television series from 1976, has been widely criticized for its subpar quality. Despite the presence of Robert Reed, known for his roles in Mannix and Harry O, the show falls short of expectations. Reed, who reportedly disliked his Mike Brady role, seemingly took a detour by joining this production. The series, spanning nine painful episodes, attempted to showcase the Brady family in a singing and dancing entertainment format. Unfortunately, the execution was flawed, with poorly written segments and strained performances. The inclusion of guest stars like Vincent Price did little to salvage the show, as the sitcom skits proved torturous. The contrived musical numbers and the perplexing use of canned laughter and extended applause further added to the discomfort of watching. The overall quality of the Brady Bunch Variety Hour reflects a low point in 1970s television, highlighting the challenges of the era. Viewers are advised to spare themselves from this particular television misstep. Jerry Reischel, often known as Fake Jan due to 1990s promos on Nick at Night and TV Land, embraces the title proudly. She secured the role after triumphing over 1,500 girls who auditioned to replace Eve Plum as Jan Brady. The final showdown was between Jerry Reischel and Kathy Hilton, with Reischel emerging victorious. The cast of the Brady Bunch Variety Hour was no stranger to song and dance routines. The kids had honed their choreography skills during the original show's run, even performing concerts between seasons. Florence Henderson, a professional singer, brought her vocal prowess to the stage. On the other hand, Robert Reed, despite his efforts, was no dancer. According to Henderson, Bob had two left feet, leading to minimal choreography for him. The show's attempt to blend the Brady family into a musical variety format meant widespread criticism. Despite Robert Reed's presence, known for roles in Mannix and Harry O, the series fell short. The nine-episode stint suffered from poorly written segments and strained performances. Guest stars, including Vincent Price, couldn't rescue the show from its uncomfortable sitcom skits. Contrived musical numbers and awkwardly timed canned laughter added to the overall discomfort of watching. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, despite its flaws, stands as a peculiar chapter in television history. Jerry Reisel's journey from auditioning among 1,500 girls to being dubbed Fake Jan adds an interesting layer to the series. The cast varied experiences with song and dance, from professional singers to those with two left feet, reflect the challenges faced in translating a beloved sitcom into a musical variety show. Amid the attempt to salvage the Brady Bunch Variety Hour in 1976, the production faced unexpected challenges. Maureen McCormick, known for her role as Marsha Brady, battled personal demons that cast a shadow over the show. Struggling with bulimia and addiction to cocaine in Qualud's McCormick's erratic behavior disrupted the set. From mysterious bruises to missed tapings, her issues prompted Jerry Reischel, dubbed Fake Jan, to learn McCormick's lines as a precaution. The show's creator, Sherwood Schwartz, distanced himself from the ill-fated production. Displeased with the overall quality, Schwartz, through his son, learned of the show listed in TV Guide. Throughout the production, Schwartz made it clear that he had no involvement, further highlighting the series' divisive nature. Network chief Fred Silverman added fuel to the turmoil, critiquing Susan Olsen's appearance. Silverman's remark on Olsen being too fat stirred uncomfortable discussions on set. The clash between network expectations and the cast's reality added another layer of tension to an already troubled production. 
In the midst of these challenges, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour struggled to find its footing. With Schwartz distancing himself, McCormick's personal struggles, and Silverman's interference, the series faced an uphill battle. The attempt to transition a beloved sitcom into a musical variety format proved more complicated than anticipated. The show's flaws, from poorly written segments to strained performances, became glaring issues. Even guest stars like Vincent Price couldn't salvage the uncomfortable sitcom skits. The contrived musical numbers and awkwardly timed canned laughter intensified the discomfort, contributing to the show's reputation as a misstep in 1970s television. Jerry Reisdell's journey, emerging as fake Jan among 1,500 auditions, added an unexpected layer to the series. The cast's varied experiences with song and dance, from professional singers to those with minimal choreography like Robert Reed, highlighted the challenges of blending the Brady family into a musical variety show. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, despite its flaws, remains a peculiar chapter in television history. The clash of creative vision, personal struggles, and network interference created a tumultuous environment that left a lasting mark on the production. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour faced unexpected challenges during its 1976 production. In a surprising turn of events, the show became the subject of parody in The Simpsons' spin-off showcase. Lisa's replacement on The Simpson Family Smile Time Variety Hour mirrored Jan's replacement on The Variety Show. This connection highlights the lasting influence of the Brady Bunch Variety Hour, even in animated satire. Behind the scenes, the dynamics added another layer to the series. The supposed romantic involvement between characters, especially the strict Ann B. Davis and the flamboyant Rip Taylor, show what a clear difference from their real-life relationship. Davis barely tolerated Taylor, leaving him puzzled and hurt by her cold demeanor off-camera. The clash between their personalities created an unexpected dynamic behind the scenes. Interestingly, the set saw frequent visits from Natalie Wood and her daughters offering a glimpse into the show's off-camera social circle. The presence of Hollywood royalty added a touch of glamour to the production, contrasting with the challenges faced by the cast in bringing the Brady family into the musical variety format. In a television world where expectations clashed with reality, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour struggled to find its place. From unexpected parodies to behind-the-scenes dynamics, the series left a lasting impression on television history, showcasing the various challenges faced by the cast and crew during its tumultuous production. During its 1976 production, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour faced an unexpected challenge. The show's distinctive swimming pool, measuring 45 feet in length, 25 feet in width, and with a depth of 5'8", added a unique touch to the musical variety format. As the fall schedule was announced in April 1977, the show was notably absent, contrary to initial plans. ABC programming chief Fred Silverman had promised its return as occasional specials throughout the season, but this promise remained unfulfilled, leaving the show's fate uncertain. The cast dynamics underwent a shift after the pilot episode. Producers Sid Croft and Marty Croft, sensing a lack of comedic elements, brought in Rip Taylor, drawing from their positive experience with him on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Taylor's addition aimed to inject humor into the series, addressing a perceived imbalance. Despite the show's challenges, including criticism for subpar quality and a divisive reception, the swimming pool's dimensions and the unfulfilled promise of occasional specials showcase the complexities of its production. Rip Taylor's comedic presence, intended to fill a perceived gap, added a layer of variety to the ensemble cast. The promise of occasional specials, left unfulfilled, reflected the uncertainties surrounding its future. Taylor's addition, though aimed at enhancing comedic elements, hinted at ongoing efforts to refine the show's dynamics. In the world of 1970s television, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour faced a unique journey, leaving a lasting impact on TV history.